to watching TVC News at one. Let's turn attention to business. African Development Bank and F FSDH have linked a new 20 million US dollar straight finance facility to bolster small and medium enterprises in Nigeria. Director General of the Nigeria Country Department, uh, AFDB, Mr. Lamin Baru, emphasized the pivotal role of trade in economic development, likening in trade finance to its lubricants. Speaking on the deal, Mr. Barrow said FSDHS and the AFDB have enjoyed an enduring partnership in supporting SMEs and Nigerian corporations engaged in trade and export value chains. While acknowledging the constraints in the supply of trade finance in Africa, Barrow highlighted the AFDB's support for more than 120 financial institutions across 30 African countries, resulting in the catalysis of over $10 billion in trade over the past decade. Equities trading on the Nigerian Exchange Limited ended the month November on an upbeat note, buoyed by a surge in investor confidence towards listed corporations. Investors seemed to be placing substantial bets on the Renew Hope agenda, although a portion of the, of the gains can also be traced back to internal stakeholder dynamics. This wave of optimism was reflected in the buying patterns driven um, the all share index to conclude November at 71,365.25 uh, index points. This marks a robust 3.08% increase from the previous month. The year to date return to 39.25%. Uh, but away from there now, President Bola Tinubu has presented the first budget since coming to power on November uh, 29, 2023, focusing on security and economic growth amid high inflation. In his speech to Parliament in Abuja, the head of state expects inflation to be reduced from 27% currently to 21.4% in 2024. The president also expects growth of at least 3.76%. Expert and financial analyst, Mr. Mokhtar Mohammed, the Chief Executive Officer of Finance with Mokhtar, bear his mind on the projections in the 2024 proposed budget. In dealing with inflation, the President has made it clear that um, he would uh, tackle the core um, uh, challenges that have brought up inflation, cost of doing business. He said he would, try, he would tackle that. He was so waiting for the Minister of Budget and Planning to tell us that they are going to tackle that. He said that he would tackle um, the, the microeconomic uh, instability so that we can have inflationary pressure come down. For me, again, that is a very ambitious uh, plan to see inflation come down to 21.4%, from a high of almost 30%. I, I think uh, a lot of things need to be, be sorted at both the monetary side and the physical side, especially the monetary side, because we are dealing with um, a monster and we are dealing with a liquidity, liquidity challenge that should be able to address this monster called, called inflation. So. Um, the, the, on the physical side, um, they have also have to look at how we can begin to grow what we eat or bring forward with policy that would stimulate the productive sector of the Nigerian economy. Because as it stands now, the productive sector of the Nigerian economy is more or less dead. So I think that is what it should be looking into. An Asian market started last month of the year on a cautious note after recent strong gains. Though growing expectations that Europe and the U.S. are poised to cut rates should help ease pressure on local currencies and central banks. MSCI's Brodex Index of Asia Pacific shares outside Japan fell by 0.5% after a surge of 7.3% last month, the most since to January. Japan's Nikkei was flat, having also jumped by 8.5% in November in the best month in three years. Chinese blue chips dropped by 0.6% and Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index fell 0.4%. The dollar index hovered near a five-session high at 103.28 against its pairs, drawing some support from a sliding euro overnight. That came after a staggering loss of 3% for November, the worst in a year, while euro rose by 0.2%. To a dollar and nine cents after tumbling 0.7 percent overnight to a one week low of one dollar eight cent. 
And our president of tech giant Microsoft, Mr. Brad Smith, says there is no chance of super intelligent artificial intelligence being created within the next 12 months and cautioned that the technology could be decades away. Mr. Smith rejected claims of a dangerous breakthrough. He further stated that there is absolutely no probability or probability that you are going to see into the so-called AGI where computers are more powerful than people in the next 12 months. It's going to take years, if not many decades. And he says, quote, but I still think the time to focus on safety is now. Recall that earlier this month, co-founder OpenAI, Mr. Sam Altman, was removed as CEO by the company's board of directors, but was swiftly reinstated after a weekend of outcry from employees and shareholders. And oil producers have agreed to voluntary uh, output court totaling about uh, 2.2 million barrels per day for early next year, led by Saudi Arabia rolling over its current voluntary cuts. Saudi Arabia, Russia, and other members of the OPEC Plus will pump more than 40% of the world's oil met online to discuss supply policy. Uh, benchmark global oil prices set to down around 2% over the voluntary reductions and investor expectations ahead of the meeting that additional supply cuts might be deeper. Analyst at JP Morgan, Mr. Christine Amalek, says market reaction implies disbelief in the full efficacy of the cuts. However, setting a new framework for each member to deliver on it can't reflect the degree of trust and cohesion among the members. And crude oil prices ended or extended losses today and look set for a straight week of declines as voluntary oil puts or output calls agreed by OPEC Plus producers fell short of market expectations. U.S. Texas Intermediate Crude fell to sell at $75.92 per barrel with the price decline of 0.05%. Brent crude uh, futures also experienced a downward price margin of 0.25% selling at $80.66 per barrel. Bonnie Light recorded a downward price review of 1.98% to sell at $80.18 per barrel. For the OPEC basket, crude oil dealers are offering $83.89 per barrel with an uptick of 0.59%.